I'm joined now by Cokie Roberts, longtime commentator for ABC News and NPR Public Broadcasting. So it's nice, especially nice to talk to you. And author, and we're talking about the latest book, which is Capital Dames, a look at women in Washington in the Civil War, right? What, yeah. what brought you to this? Well, I've written several history books uh, about women, uh, thinking strongly that the other half of humankind uh, yeah. should have history There's written a, about a them. Out there, right. Right. right, and uh, and also I, I do feel very strongly that if you just talk about the men in history, it's in some degree inaccurate because you're not getting the full story. The full and story, so, as uh, in as in what the rest of the world was up to, mm -hmm. and uh, so the uh, the Civil War. Uh, really did change the role of women in America, as most wars do change the role of women, you, and it changed the role of Washington yeah. in American life. Well, we can go through all of those, but first, with the starting point, are, are you starting from a point that women are underrepresented oh, in our course. history? Oh, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally yeah. underrepresented. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the disadvantage of that is obvious. You, you're not hearing about mm -hmm. uh, or reading about the people, uh, the, as I say, the other half of the human race. But there's also a disadvantage in terms of really understanding the great men in history. Because if all you read is their own writings or their writings uh, to each other, mm -hmm. these are letters and documents that are uh, studied and edited right. and uh, thought through uh, with publication in mind. If mm -hmm. you read the women's letters, mm -hmm. which are in the moment, very frank, often very funny, uh, and they give you a far, far fuller picture of the men. Mm -hmm. uh, and the men become flesh and blood human beings, mm -hmm. not bronze and marble statues. So when you're, I mean, the Civil War is, a, of course, the hinge point in American history. Do you end up seeing a fundamentally different perspective on it or a different way into it? How do you come to think of I it? I think it's um, a different perspective in that uh, what you see is these women actually saying by the time the war is grinding on and on, mm -hmm. this is a failure. And, and I came away with that, that sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never wanted to write about the Civil War because the Civil War is such an awful moment in American history. And my, I mean, literally, you, did, you thought, I, I don't want to touch I don't this because touch it's this. too much. It's too much. I'm yeah. from the South. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, my ancestors fought uh, right. on the wrong side. Yeah. So the, that um, awareness was there. Very much there. Yeah, yeah. But the, um, uh, the reading the women uh, saying that was really quite remarkable uh -huh. to me. And I came away with a sense of this is such a failure of politics. And I'm a believer in politics. Yes, I, I, know, I, know. I cover yeah, politics I know, I and, know, I, yeah. and I believe that the system uh, can work and yeah. should work. Yeah. But this was a place where the entire political system broke down and the effect of that was 600,000 American lives lost and a whole part of the country devastated. The, the, this book clearly and other of your books, they are looking at politics and Washington in particular, where you have spent so much of your life, <laughs> right. right? But this is, again, part of the conscious effort to understand that aspect of your life in a different way? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, having grown up here in a political family, when I was a child, my father was in Congress, and then when I was a grown up, my mother was in Congress, mm -hmm. uh, I saw how, uh, how important this city was and how it could uh, be a, an influence for the good in American life, and I also saw how influential the women in the city were. And so I started writing uh, history books with that in mind. So there are a lot of, a lot of wonderful characters through here. Yes. Who particular was there either one who was your way into this or one that surprised you in the well end? there were several yeah. uh, I, I consciously did work with you know both northerners and southerners yeah. and yeah. Um, and of course there are women that you've heard of like Clara Barton and Dorothea Dix although you probably don't know as much about them right. uh, as uh, as I learned and was able to convey and they were quite remarkable human yeah. beings but um, the women whose letters I I really uh, poured through and many of them never published before, mm -hmm. uh, were women like Verena Davis, the wife of Jefferson Davis, who was a total delight, as smart as they come, yeah. and yeah. a really wonderful letter writer, 
or and, and um, what a surprising story yes, that yes, she her, ended up even after the war. Right, right? after was, the war, yeah. she went to New York, yeah, um, yeah. much to the dismay of the South, yes. and um, and she basically said, "Look, I'm." <laughs> she had always been considered not quite pale enough, fair right, enough right. for a proper Southern belle. And because she was olive complected, yeah. and she said, "I'm free, brown, and 62. I can go wherever I, I want to go." I damn want at and this she point, right? um, yeah. she became a journalist, yeah. and she befriended Julia Grant, uh, the wife yeah. of Ulysses Grant, and 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 when they met, it was page one news in every newspaper in the country. Yeah. And that's another thing that was really a delight. Um, you know, when I first started, when I wrote Founding Mothers, that came out in 2004. This research was much harder. Now, part of it is 18th century is harder. This hard. one was harder, yeah. No, the, the doing research was much harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Because now, newspapers are online from right. the end of the 18th century on. So I can sit with my iPad reading what they were reading, yeah, yeah. Uh, which I just think is remarkable. Yeah. And, um, and the Library of Congress, by the way, is very instrumental in that. Yeah. And um, the, so uh, there I plug in the day that Julia Grant and Verena Davis meet, and it pops up on newspapers all around the country. Yeah, so yeah. these were these were personages in their time. I remember myself reading Walt Whitman's uh, right. writings about as, as a, a nurse, nurse in Washington. Yes, and I remember. I, I guess it's the same thing that you're talking about. Is sort of it's seeing the war in a different way. Right. 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 The, the man who's walking through the uh, the bodies and tending right. to them right. as a poet. So this is a, just telling us about history. Well, and of course, Louisa May Alcott came here for a mm -hmm. brief period yeah. uh, as a nurse, and then she got too sick to stay. Yeah. But she wrote from that, mm -hmm. uh, from her time, a little book called Hospital Sketches, yeah. and that's what made her reputation. And the publishers came to her and said, write a book for girls, and yeah. that book has never been out of print. So, so does one character lead you to the next? Sure. Do, what's your writing sure. style here? Yes, yeah. characters lead you to each other. But yeah. I, I had very specifically looked for uh, three Southern women, three Northern women. Yeah. Um, uh, and I, uh, the Louisa, uh, Louisa Rogers Meggs is an unknown Northern woman. She was married to Montgomery Meggs, who was the quartermaster of the Union yeah. Army. Her papers, uh, thankfully, were all in the Library of Congress, mm -hmm. and so I was. A and she's she's got a delightful sense of humor, mm -hmm. so I was able to uh, really mine those mm -hmm. totally for the first time. And ha and has your own uh, writing sense or process changed over time as you've written more books? Uh, uh, maybe as technology, you were just well, referring technology to technology certainly has helped. changed some of the That's research, That's made right? a huge difference. But, yeah, yeah. but the books that I've written, uh, the history books, Founding yeah. Mothers, Ladies yeah. of Liberty, and this one, Capital Dames, pulled together all of these different women. And uh, and that's a very difficult, actually, you know, just wrestling it all. Yeah, and yeah. So I don't think... Because it's a huge story. It's a big story, yeah, and that's yeah. why I confined it to Washington. Otherwise, it would be way too diffuse. Yeah. But the... Um, but so I don't think that my style changes in that way. I will tell you this, uh, which I... For um, public broadcasting listeners uh, will find probably interesting, is I'm very consciously write the way I talk yeah so that people can recognize my voice the voice well that's what I wanted to ask you about because you have a recognizable voice in broadcasting right. and then you translate it into writing so you're really thinking it's you you think of it as the same voice just very much so you do. and I yeah. and and that's hard actually um, it's yeah. easier frankly to write pretty yeah. Uh, you know, and you're tempted to do it all the time yeah. because you want to show off a little bit and yeah. show that you really can write that way. Right. But, uh, to write pretty or to write scholarly or knowingly and in, any in of a those way that, things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pretty. Pretty. <laughs> but, and, but, uh, but I think it, I want the books to be accessible, and I want people to to recognize my talking to them. Yeah. And so that's, I, I write them that way. So do they end up going through drafts where it becomes more your voice? Or I, is that, are you now used to writing in that voice? I'm used to writing in that voice, but yeah. I, I edit myself very yeah. heavily. Yeah, yeah. And, and you've written about this, but I mean, growing up, you books, were books a big part of your life? Absolutely. Always, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I live in the house I grew up in. 
And so, oh, I didn't realize yes, that. Yes, my wow. family moved there when I was eight years so old. So the books on the shelf are A still... A lot of the books oh on the shelf goodness. are still wow. the books on wow. the shelf. Uh, and my father was a voracious reader. Yeah. And, um, and he and Jack Kennedy actually took an Evelyn Wood fast reading class with Evelyn Wood. <laughs> That's and, pretty good. <laughs> so the things you just said, Jack Kennedy, <laughs> Evelyn Wood, with Evelyn Wood. <laughs> and, they, um, and, uh, and somebody just the, at the book festival last year, I think, came up to me and said, your father was the fastest reader I ever knew. And that was sort of out of the blue. Yeah. But, um, so do you find so his old books? I, his there? old books are there. And you probably find your own books as oh, a child. Oh, absolutely. And, and textbooks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, so well, I'd, I'd, I had no idea about that. Yeah. So is that good to be surrounded oh, by Oh, absolutely. The, and of because course, one could think it was sort of like ghosts that no, could well, be... No, but they're, they're Caspers. They're friendly yeah. ghosts. Uh, yeah. the, um, but also the, the bookshelves. I mean, we keep building more and more and more bookshelves. And, uh, yeah. It's, it's yeah. a wonderful thing to be yeah. surrounded by yeah. books. And of course, now we, we know that uh, children thrive when they grow up in yeah. homes. Yes. Yeah. And um, I've done a lot of work with Save the Children to try to yeah, get yeah. books to children. You know, just sure in our last minute here, it. as a Washington person, I mean, the book festival yes. is not what one thinks so much. I mean, we Washington is about politics, right? right? The life. Are you positive, negative about the life of books in our literary culture as you sit here in Washington? Yes, I think the fact that hundreds of thousands of people show up at this festival yes. to celebrate and buy books is yeah. fabulous. And it's a good example because many of the women that I write about are political wives. And it was a political wife who started this festival. Laura Bush started this book festival uh, with, of course, the wonderful assistance of Jim Billington, the Librarian of Congress. Right. But uh, it is a good example of what a political wife can leave as a legacy. All right, the new book is Capital Dames, Cokie Roberts. Thank you so much. Good to be with you.